what are your opening thoughts on the Battle of the Western Heavyweights? I think they're good. Just watching them live, I can see why they give people problems and how they create turnovers and stuff is they're very athletic, very physical. And I was just super proud of our guys for uh, for <clears throat> making plays. I mean, that's what it's going to come down to in this league is who makes the plays in the fourth quarter, particularly the second half of the fourth quarter to, to win games. And uh, they gave us, uh, you know, they were trying to fight their way back into the game and um, came close, but our guys uh, made all the made the plays needed to, to win the game. Uh, what are your thoughts on resilience and thinking specifically on the offensive side. I mean, you're without, without uh, Javon Katoy. McKinnis goes out two picks for uh, for VA in that time. Yeah. Collins wasn't having a great night. What are your thoughts on playing through that? Yeah, I, I, I told VA, I said, I, I appreciate him totally when you learn about people when things aren't going right. When it's, when it's easy and things are going well, that's, that's easy. But when something goes wrong that he... Uh, recomposed himself, was a total leader. We ate up a bunch of time on the clock. We did did a great job. They, you know, he's doing stuff that you don't see all the time as far as burning time and managing the huddle. And um, like you said, we were playing with guys that, uh, you know, we were down a couple starting receivers and guys filling in like Mackey that uh, um, just understand the whole playbook. So those are the, those are the things you, you appreciate. What does a game, building off that question, what does a game like this do for your team heading into the rest of the season? We, we talked earlier this week and you said, you still got 12 games left after tonight. Yeah. What, what can this game do when, if times get tough down the road? Yeah, well, the West, when it, winning in the West is tough. And so any wins we get in, the, in this division are, are huge. And, you know, we're going through another thing of playing Saskatchewan and then we play Calgary and then we play Winnipeg. And it's like, you know, it's like an endless thing. I think what we're doing a good job of right now is trying to do just one thing at a time, not looking way down the road is just try to do one week. And um, I think it comes down to is energy. Who, what, which teams have, have the juice, have the energy, um, you know, are as healthy as possible. I think that's what it's coming down to in this league because it's a, it's a long, it's a long grind. I know this. I say this to all the, the coaches we play against. It's like this. This is just one of those years where there's no bad team. You have to you have to line up and play really well to beat anyone. So, uh, like I said, I'm just super proud of our guys. Was it? it seemed like a lot. He now has the second longest consecutive streak of many field goals in league history. What do you say about that guy? It's uh, it's such it's such a when you're coaching and you're making decisions. You know, a lot of times you're thinking, okay, they got a fast returner back there. Should we be trying this? All those things. And there, there's just such a comfort level with that. And even that 50 yarder, I mean, that's a big kick, a big play in the game. So, um, you know, g g good for him. I didn't realize he kicked seven. So good for him. It's awesome. On that, that white note, he called a timeout at the end of the game to kick the one more field goal. Was the reasoning behind that record related? Was it points? Was it points yeah we only we we play Calgary and Winnipeg three times so it doesn't that doesn't factor in but Saskatchewan we only play them twice and I just remember watching the Winnipeg Calgary game last night and Winnipeg got the tiebreaker on them by one point so do you think that's going to make a difference at the end of the year and the way these guys are how good they are um, if anything tips the odds in our favor then uh, we're going to do it and I Corey and I talked about it after he knows it's not anything about showing people up or doing anything like that it's just Trying to trying to be smart and trying to tip the odds in your favor. Defensively, it seemed like this game was defined by three or four big explosion plays that allowed them to hang around. Yep. What was your assessment of, of those big plays? Yeah, we um, there's there's some stuff we need to clean up, just communication wise, and then uh, um, we got to tackle better. Although I've seen those receivers for them. Um, make people look bad they're just big strong guys that if you don't if you don't wrap up and bring them down they they can make you look bad so they made some big plays we we need to you know the cfl is a league of explosive plays and the, if you limit the explosive plays it's really hard for offenses to just march down the field all the time so we'll we'll look at the film tomorrow and make sure we improve on that